The A6 C5 platform was introduced in 1997 and was produced until 2004 with the RS6 model starting in July 2002 and ceasing with the end of the production of the C5 model to make way for the C6. The C5 RS6 is built in a saloon and Avant body style. The wagon would eventually become the only offering in later generations and many know the RS6 as a fast estate car. Although this was the first RS6, it was not the first time the concept had been attempted by the manufacturer, with the RS2 Avant that had been jointly built with Porsche, and the B5 RS4, developed with Cosworth in the UK, that had gone on sale two years before its bigger brother, the RS6. At launch, the RS6 took the crown as the world's fastest estate car, which quickly got it noticed and led to it getting screen time in the British movie Layer Cake. Audi knew they were onto something with the RS6, as it started to attract customers intrigued by a family car that claimed that it could keep up with supercars. At the heart of the RS6 is a 4.2 litre V8 with twin turbochargers, 40 valves and 444 brake horsepower. And to continue the theme of fours, it boasted a 0-62 time of 4.7 seconds. To rein in all that speed was a set of eight piston Brembo brakes which were tucked behind the front wheels and a single piston ATE caliper was used on the rear. Audi also offered the RS6 Plus model later in the RS6 production life. The upgraded model recorded a horsepower figure of 473 and could sprint from 0 to 62 miles per hour in a slightly faster 4.6 seconds with a new limited top speed of 174 miles per hour. This was sold in a vamp form only and received several tweaks away from the engine, including new suspension that rode 10mm lower, although you should note that the standard RS6 also rode 20mm lower than the other C5 models within the range. Drilled brake discs with a larger circumference and a revised steering rack for marginally higher precision were also factored in to the Plus model. Those hoping our next words are about a manual gearbox may be disappointed. The RS6 has only ever been sold as an automatic. With the C5 generation, this was a 5-speed Tiptronic unit from ZF, coded 5HP24A. However, there have been several owners that have attempted to manual swap their RS6 gearbox due to issues that we will come on to shortly. First up, we'll cover concerns of the C5 chassis in general so you know what to look for and then talk about the most common problem spots on the RS6 model. Pixelated screens. This was an era before the high resolution colour displays of today and Audis of this age can have dead pixels in the odometer display. Fortunately, the issue is well known and your existing unit can be repaired. Window guides and sunroof drains are worth inspecting. If there's no sunroof fitted, then it's one less thing to check, but make sure all the windows go up and down without any issue. Blocked plenum drains are another common fault that can result in water ingress into the passenger footwell. The central control module lives under the footwell and can become inoperative causing a headache of repairs including dashboard electronics acting erratically. On to some RS6 specific issues, first is the DRC or Dynamic Ride System. Servicing the system can be fairly inexpensive compared to the many large builds that can lurk around an RS6 although if the system needs replacement, it will be a more expensive fix. The system was so common to fail on the C5 RS6 that a US lawsuit got it classed as not fit for purpose, and many owners have chosen to change it with aftermarket parts. Check the car's ride during a test drive. See if the owner has any evidence of maintaining the system, and if the primary ride feels overly busy, then prepare for a replacement while hoping you may get away with just the service. Front arms should be checked for play and wear. These are heavy cars with owners that may have pushed their abilities. If there is no history of new front arms, then expect to replace them. Note the rear suspension is double wishbone to check to see if they've ever been replaced too. Next, check out for transmission flushes. Audi quote these as sealed for life, but prudent owners would have ignored this years ago and kept up a constant service schedule. Although it is likely that at some point an RS6 transmission will need a rebuild, Needle bearings can wear down to near failure without throwing an engine code. So if you see an engine light and it points to the transmission, it is better to accept the need for work early to reduce the overall cost before something fails and makes it an even more expensive repair. ABS control modules are another known area of weakness, although these are one of the less scary bills of RS6 ownership. Owners forums generally class the RS6 as very enjoyable to drive when everything is working as it should 
and a joy to own, but they can be the equivalent of supercar money to maintain. If we've missed any non-engine related issues, then please add them into the comments below. We try and concentrate on the common issues, but our lists are non-exhaustive. Both the standard and plus model of the C5 RS6 use the same engine components, and aside from different mapping for the tuning of the engine and raised top speed, the engine itself is identical. The 4.2 litre 5 valve per cylinder V8 by turbo engine produces 444 brake horsepower or 476 brake horsepower on plus models and averages 20.3 miles per gallon. A strict service schedule is needed for the RS6 motor to function in top shape and this includes a timing belt service at 40,000 mile intervals or 4 years. Inspect service records to make sure this has been followed closely. Exhaust manifolds are known to spring leaks, either needing replacement or repair, with some owners choosing to upgrade when they fail. It should be noticed that these engines are known to be tight for space for workshops to access, and many will quote at an engine out job just to replace the O2 sensors. Intercoolers are commonly upgraded by owners, the standard item not quite up to the standard expected of a high performance Audi, with many needing replacement due to air leaks or failures. Signs to look out for of impending failure or a lack of boost high up the rev range. A less expensive part are thermostats and coolant temperature sensors. However, again, labour for these jobs can also become expensive. Due to their array of known issues and expense to work on, modified examples that have had power boosted without supporting modifications are best avoided. Although some reputable tuning companies with thorough servicing could still be considered viable. The RS6 was available in a variety of colours and interior options including carbon-backed heated front seats and some were fitted with solar-powered sunroofs to boost air circulation on hot days, but these don't trickle charge the car's battery. As previously mentioned, both the Avant and Saloon configurations were available on the C5 generation RS6. People tend to prefer the wagon, but RS6 values have been steadily rising as collectors have entered the marketplace. If you buy cheap and are happy to work on these cars yourself, they not only stand out on the road for their rarity, but their performance. Although we do live in a world of 400 horsepower hatchbacks today, so it's all relative. For our pick, we would look for a saloon, as these are not only cheaper, but are becoming a rare sight. In the UK, only 271 were registered, which is just shy of one third of the number of Avants that were sold new. A little over 1,000 C5 RS6s were sold across the two years of production in the UK. And for American viewers, approximately 1,200 of the 8,081 C5 RS6s ever made went to the US market. Many saloons around the world have since been mechanically totaled by owners unable to pay up for the heavy maintenance bills and have been chopped up for parts of the more desirable Avant version. This may make the RS6 saloon a very rare sight one day, and the dog probably isn't that happy that you can take them along on a barnstorming ride along a twisty road anyway. For those of you also considering the RS6 C6 chassis, then consider subscribing as we have a buyer's guide scheduled for release soon. We hope you've enjoyed our guide, and as ever, if we've missed anything then please comment below to help those that are searching the classifieds for an RS6. If you find this helpful then please consider liking the video to help out the channel. But until next time, happy auto barnstorming.